In this recording, I'm going to show you how to run App Inventor apps in an alternative emulator than the one that comes with App Inventor. So right now, I have uh, the um, alternative emulator on the screen. You can see it's uh, much larger than the uh, default one. I can then go to my blocks editor and then connect to this new emulator. And in a moment, I expect my app to show in this uh, emulator. So this is the end result. And uh, next, I will show you how to get here, how to get to this emulator. While the app is uh, loading, I want to show you that once you install these extra tools, you'll be able to create multiple emulators, um, any anything uh, that uh, is available on an Android uh, device. So here is a choice of different screen sizes, different emulators, and uh, we can then match it with a development platform, so a version of API. And then we will start any of these emulators created and then preview our apps in the emulator. So this is what it looks like. The app is now loading exactly the same behavior as in the default emulator. So when you normally click the new emulator button and a program is launched, the program that's actually launched is uh, under applications, app inventor, commands for uh, app inventor. Uh, the shell script is run emulator and then emulator is the executable that runs. So instead of that, we are going to launch our own emulator and here's my app and of course the um, the app is uh, a well-known starter app for App Inventor. So how does this come about? Let's go ahead and stop uh, these uh, programs that I'm currently running. And uh, I'm going to uh, back up to uh, the files which I currently um, have open. So first of all, we have to download a specific uh, program, the Android SDK. Uh, we uh, get this uh, software from uh, from Google, so we'll go ahead and do a quick search for uh, Android SDK, and uh, I can go ahead and navigate to the download page. Please note that by default, uh, I have the offer here of downloading the ADT bundle for Mac. Uh, now you can download this, it's going to be about 400 megabytes, uh, which is uh, more than we need, uh, and it covers a development environment like the uh, Eclipse. Instead, we're going to try to download just the SDK. So we'll go to use existing IDE, and now we have a chance to download just the SDK tools. I'm running on a Mac, if you have a Windows uh, system, then you download SDK tools for Windows. We have to, of course, agree and we will uh, start start the download. This file is downloading. I actually uh, downloaded it uh, a moment ago, so we'll go ahead and go into this file. When you double click on the zip file, it's going to uh, unzip, and uh, the unzipped version of this uh, file is in this directory. You can see there are only four directories, and uh, currently uh, this system uh, is limited in what it can do. So we basically downloaded the um, uh, manager for the SDK. In order to download specific APIs or specific version of Android, we have to uh, do some additional steps. So inside of the tools directory of the downloaded zip file that you have extracted into any uh, location, uh, make sure that you remember where you extract it. Often it's right in the downloads directory. You will find an Android executable. This is the file that you have to run, the Android executable, and it's going to start the Android SDK manager. So please note that uh, when you've just first downloaded the 70 megabytes of zip file, you have the SDK tools, but you do not have any of the platform tools. Notice they all say not installed. They want to be installed. All those check marks here show that it is recommended that we install them, and so on your system, go ahead and click the Install 10 Packages, and then you'll have to agree uh, to the license for each one of them. 
and then you will have 4.3 API, perhaps by the time you're watching this video, it is uh, a much higher uh, version, which is okay. Uh, you can also download previous versions of Android and work with those. Uh, it's, it's recommended to work with the current version and, uh, and, and, and just move forward. So you will press install packages, you will download. I've done this a moment ago, so I can go to a file where this download is already completed and notice how many more directories I have. I can now expand the tools directory and when I double click on Android, I will now see uh, the word installed next to all those other elements which previously had uh, check marks for installation. At this point, I will navigate in my menu to tools and manage AVDs. Okay, AVDs would be the Android uh, virtual devices. Now I'm in the uh, AVD manager and what I can do here is very interesting. I can go to new to create a new emulator. I can call this emulator test. I earlier created a Galaxy and another emulator. I will choose what device I'd like to emulate. So you can experiment with various devices depending on the uh, program that you wrote. You'd like to test it in different sizes. You can do that. So you select uh, a, a device and then you select the API the target. Um, I recommend the Google API because it comes with the Google Maps API and so uh, that's useful with some of the software. If you have a camera on your laptop or computer, then you can actually tell the emulator to use the camera from your laptop. So as you're creating a program that is going to be snapping pictures, you can have actual pictures be snapped on the emulator. Then you want to make sure to select an SD card and provide some kind of a size there. Uh, you can uh, specify to use host, CPU, um, host uh, GPU here and then press OK. When, it, when you do that, you have now a new emulator that is uh, specified. I'm going to go back to my Galaxy uh, emulator. I'll show you uh, what uh, options I've chosen for this emulator. And now I can say, OK, go ahead and uh, launch it. Now I am launching the emulator which Inventor uh, environment. The Blocks Editor App Inventor will know that there is an emulator running, but it does not start it automatically uh, when we say new uh, emulator. It still is connected to that small uh, little um, phone which fits on most uh, uh, screens of uh, people who are trying App Inventor. So it makes sense to, to include a small emulator there. So this is loading. And uh, when this loads, I will have the options in my blocks editor to connect to a new emulator. All right, and that's going to happen momentarily. I'll resize this window. And uh, let's see. Let me put that size back so that way we can see our, our menu well. And of course, uh, the uh, emulator can take a little bit of time to load. Um, we are going to have a chance to unlock the screen in a moment and then uh, go ahead and uh, continue uh, our presentation. And now we are back and the emulator has uh, loaded. Uh, we can go ahead and unlock it and uh, various Android devices will unlock differently. Uh, sometimes there's a swipe, sometimes a, a lock button. And in my blocks editor, I can drop down and see my emulator loaded. If this drop down does not appear, just go ahead and relaunch the emulator. Uh, I can go ahead and select now my emulator that is running and uh, the uh, blocks editor of App Inventor is connecting to the emulator. And uh, in time, my development app is going to get installed and then launched. Uh, in the uh, emulator. It's also uh, worth noting that uh, the uh, larger emulators um, would benefit from that GPU setting that uh, we selected when creating the emulator definition. 
uh, this is going to use the host computer's uh, graphics acceleration and therefore the redrawing of the screen is going to be faster. Okay, so our app is now uh, getting launched and um, we should have our emulator up and running just as it was at the beginning of the presentation. Here's the app and uh, of course we can uh, execute it as before. Thank you very much.